Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for kind introduction. Uh, yeah, so first of all, I'd like to thank Professor Yavuz, although he's not here, for giving me a chance to have this seminar and kind arrangement of the administrative stuff and my run. Okay, so today I'd like to talk about uh, nanomechanical sensors. And uh, the major application would be this kind of olfactory sensor. So it's a kind of electronic nose. Okay, so yeah, just as introduced, I get some education and some positions and now group leader. And uh, I just started the sensor study from here. So just when I visit University of Basel, where I started. And before that, I was studying surface science. But anyway, so when I arrived at this University of Basel and visited Professor Gavers, Christoph Gavers' room on the first day, I received this chip, tiny chip. And he told me that I can do whatever I want, but we don't have anything. So I, it means I, have, I had to construct everything by myself. So uh, yeah, that, that is a kind of surprising situation, but I, it was a very good opportunity for me to learn everything by myself from literally scratch. So I constructed some handmade soldered uh, electronics and some chambers and made some sensor system. And now, uh, yeah, just based on this kind of experiences, I am now operating my uh, own group. So this is a short history. Anyway, uh, by the way, when I was a bachelor, master, as most of you were, I was kind of junk student. <laughs> like, uh, appeared only once a month in the laboratory and just singing, making some live performance, whatever. So you cannot expect your life. <laughs> uh, anyway, it not uh, predict your life. <laughs> anyway, so I'm from Japan and I'm from Nimes. So it is, Tokyo is here. So Nimes is here. So it's about 60 kilometer away. So just one hour from Tokyo. Okay, so this is our institute that is a national institute for material science and we are in MANA, so Materials Nanoarchitectonics. So it's kind of a similar concept with uh, WING, but we are more focusing on assembly of nano components and so on. Just a few more advertisements that uh, NIMS in material science, uh, not so bad for in terms of uh, citation ranking, we are doing some reasonable research. And especially for MANA, we got some uh, special issues and so on. Okay, so anyway, uh, ah, just, just one more. So we have a good patent income. So it means, so these are other uh, universities and some institute in Japan, but we are in the top level. So we are trying to make something real practical. Anyway, so let me start with a uh, situation of olfaction sensors, electric nodes. Here's the humanoid in 2001 called Pino. As you can see, we have already have cameras, microphone, pressure sensors, but no nose. 
just random sticking here. Then, 15 years later, some another fancy humanoid was released. And I quickly look into the specification, but still no chemical sensors. So in this case, there is no intention for, in the first place. So uh, this is a kind of situation of the sensors and five senses we have. So as you know, we have good physical sensors, but almost no practical uh, mobile chemical sensors. But these kind of sensors should be uh, important technology for emerging demands in healthcare, uh, medicine, safety, environment control, food issues, and so on. So uh, to that one of the reasons of this kind of lack of chemical sensors should be a lack of a reasonable sensor element. So uh, as you know, there are lots of various technologies, but uh, they have some trade-offs in some specifications and so on. So we first try to make some good, reasonable uh, sensor element based on nanomechanics. Okay, so nanomechanical sensors, so uh, some of you may have not heard of this kind of sensor, so I'd like to briefly introduce this uh, sensor. So as you know, uh, cat, uh, so representative structure is a cantilever type. So micro cantilever is commonly used for atomic force microscope uh, in the uh, academic field. And by laser reflection, we can read out the deflection or frequency shift, and there are lots of demonstration for imaging. But we are not using this type of cantilever for imaging, but we are using for sensing applications. Okay, so this is the simple mechanism of nanomechanical sensors. Uh, we coat the sensor surface with so-called receptors, and then when the target molecule absorbed onto these receptors, it generates some in-plane stress, so-called surface stress which deforms this structure. So by measuring this deflection, we can measure the analytes. So this uh, optical readout is commonly used for high sensitivity measurements, but it tends to become a bulky, ex ex expensive system. So another option is using electric readout, usually with piezo register. And in this case, we can make a small, low-cost, practical system. So we are now focusing on this approach, but the long-standing issue was this low sensitivity issue. So oh, it was somehow a few orders of magnitude difference between these two. So this uh, limited the lots of applications as uh, demonstrated in optical readout. So we try to overcome this one. And actually, there are lots of trials for more than decades all over the world. And uh, by making some structures, patterning, and so on. But most of them resulted, resulted in only a percent level improvement. So it's a kind of still huge gap between the optical readout. Then we tackle this challenge, how to improve the sensitivity. Uh, to overcome this long-standing issue, we made the integration of basic sciences. So oh, in collaboration with uh, EPFL, Switzerland, and Dr. Heinrich Roller, uh, inventor of SDM. So uh, integrating mechanics, materials, crystallography, electronics, all these aspects should be 
taken into account to make something new. So uh, just starting from scratch, just handwriting calculation almost every day, and then we gradually found some guidelines how to improve the sensitivity, how to optimize each portion. And then here I summarize the uh, optimization scheme from cantilever to new sensor MSS. So we first investigated, investigated the materials, which material we should use. And uh, finally, we found this silicon is a reasonable option because of the feasibility of microfabrication and also uh, transduction coefficient, so piezoresistive coefficient. So oh, in this case, uh, signal relative resistance change is determined by this simple relationship. It means uh, stress in X direction, in this case, this direction, and stress in Y direction, in this direction. So the, the difference between these two stresses uh, determine the signal. So in the case of surface stress, in the case of uh, simple cantilever, surface stress is uh, uniformly distributed on the surface. So in this case, this one and this one is almost equal on the whole surface. So it results in almost zero signal as we can uh, found in the simulation. So to overcome this uh, critical problem, we first utilize this double level structure so in this case, we put one more larger portion here where we assume the surface stress is induced. So in this case, again, we cannot get the uh, electric signal as this relationship uh, says. But the mechanical deformation accumulates towards the free end. So if we firmly connect these two levers. The situation on this lever is something like the point force applied to here. So in this case, uh, the stress is basically in X direction. And uh, as a matter of uh, moment effect, this kind of constriction can enhance the stress, concentrate the stress here. So we can get a uh, good signal, as you can see here. And we were almost uh, fabricated this uh, structure, but it looks not so beautiful. So we try to find something more fancy or more reasonable and so on. Then we gradually departed from the concept of cantilever. So cantilever con definition is a one side clamped beam. And we were kind of cursed by this cantilever sensor approach. But if we think about the mechanics, we can put this fixed end at the opposite side. So this is basically, in principle, similar situation that larger portion pushes this smaller portion in uniaxial stress. So at this point, we no longer need this remainings of cantilevers. And also, we can utilize this side part. Then finally, we found this structure is a reasonable structure. That is a membrane here and stress induce a mechanical stress, a mechanical deformation, and it pushes this smaller portion. And another aspect is uh, uh, electric uh, issue. If 
you calculate the output from Freestone Bridge, it can be written like this. So plus, minus, plus, minus for four registers like this. So with this feature, uh, we can put uh, plus, minus, plus, minus alternatively. So if we align carefully, we can gain all of the resistance change to the output. So finally, we found this configuration is uh, one of, at least one of the optimized structure. Uh, in this case, receptor, uh, so this membrane will deform and these four will uh, detect the mechanical signal with a big amp amplification. So this, ah, this is the membrane type surface stress sensor, MSS. And this uh, sensor has uh, good features like uh, high sensitivity, small size, and also versatility. It means we can use any material as a receptor here. In addition to some practical aspects for the, some system uh, engineering. Okay, so the working principle is something like uh, just uh, as you can imagine from the cantilever structure. So we put receptor layer here, and when the, some analytes are sorbed, then the, this receptor layer expands, swells a bit, and it induces some stress at these constricted parts, and we can get the signal. Okay, then this is the actual motion of the MSS, observed by digital holographic microscope. So this is a real-time movie, and we put polymers, different polymers on each channel. And this is that I blow my breath, and it reacts to my breath in different ways because of the different polymers. So the vertical motion is around 10 to 100 nanometers, but it, it literally uh, moves. Actually, before I observed this uh, movie, I suspected whether it's really moving as we expected, but this one clearly confirmed that it is working as we designed. Then for the electric signal, cantilever was something like this level, but with this MSS structure, we can enhance the signal a lot and more than 100 times. So after uh, long uh, trials and errors, we finally got some breakthrough in sensitivity for the piezoresistive nanomechanical sensors. And the sensitivity is now uh, a bit higher than the optical readout sensor. So yeah, we can get lots of uh, application. So for the size, uh, this is actual sensor chip we fabricated in collaboration with EPFL, uh, especially this uh, Teru Akiyama, Dr. Akiyama. Uh, we uh, can make the sensor, one chip, one sensor, one channel for about one square millimeters. So we can integrate more than 100 channels for one square centimeters. Okay, then somehow we got this MSS structure for a reasonable sensing platform covering some uh, various uh, requirements for the mobile olfaction applications. So here I would like to show some example of applications. Uh, first, liquid phase. Uh, okay, before that, uh, for the reference 
This is a conventional optical readout cantilever sensor system. It is kind of huge system. But this, this is a worst case, but kind, kind of this kind of system. So it's a bit difficult to make some practical application. But now we can use this kind of simple setup all operated by USB and just simple analog digital converter power supply and so on. That's it. With uh, good specifications like high sensitivity and high reproducibility and so on. And uh, another important aspect is uh, compatibility with uh, a double side coating. So uh, anyway, we, we can just dip the chip into the solution you like for coating and measurement and so on. So it does not require any uh, special devices. Okay, so for the liquid phase uh, application, we demonstrated that real-time level-free measurements of antibiotics, in this case vancomycin, absorbed onto bacterial cell wall. Uh, some signal were, was confirmed. So the interaction between antibiotics and bacteria. Okay, another application was uh, detection of liver cancer marker, uh, this protein, alpha fat protein AFP. So we confirmed that sensitivity can be this level in principle. Yeah, but this is still in buffer, so not in whole blood test. So it's still long way to real application, but somehow we confirm good sensitivity. Okay, then the gas phase measurements. Uh, for the gas phase measurements, we made a pattern recognition for complex samples. Uh, here, we can coat the sensor elements by various receptors. And uh, if we measure some sample, each channel will give some signal. And we can extract some feature from this signal and make some uh, pattern matrix. And if we get several samples and make some pattern, uh, how say matrix, we can plot this, for example, in this case, we extract four parameters. It means we can put some point in four dimensional space. And this multi-dimensional space is very difficult to image by human beings. So it can be a mathematically project onto some principal component uh, plane like this, then we, we can clearly understand some feature that sample one and three would be similar. So this is a very basic way of analysis, but you can of course use whatever uh, analytical method. Anyway, so some example is that uh, application for food, it's the identification of meats by their smell. So I quickly went to the supermarket and got some meat and uh, measured and found some porks, formed some cluster here, beef and chicken. And you know this Kagoshima brand pork is most expensive pork among this. And it smells like a beef. <laughs> maybe, maybe. J just, just some feature. Okay, another application is uh, food, again food, but spices. So 
if we measure something in liquid or some solvent contain sample, some signals sometimes are very much affected by the solvent. So uh, we measure the dried sample, dried spices, and uh, measured by my colleague, Dr. Imamura, Gaku, Gaku Imamura. And we can uh, identify, uh, discriminate these uh, spices and found it is somehow related with the component of chemicals included in these spices. Okay, so th this kind of application would be also good for uh, cosmetic applications that uh, I asked him to make this kind of uh, measurements and analysis. Some, and uh, we, I asked him in the morning and I asked him that I need the results by noon. Then he quickly made, and this one can be done in one hour including this analysis. So it's, it's very easy to make th this level of application. Okay, then the, one of the most important applications would be a medical application. So the breath analysis. Uh, in collaboration with EPFL, University of Basel, uh, we made uh, measurements of the breath from cancer patients and breath from healthy persons. And we found there are some difference between these two samples. Uh, yeah, so, but these are still uh, only four patients, four healthy persons, so we have to do much more statistics in this kind of application, but it indicates some possibility of this type of application. And moreover, uh, we asked one patient to give breath sample before surgery and after surgery. And it is found that after surgery, the breath became into a healthy person's uh, region. Okay, so, Oh, all of these have been done in kind of laboratory level. So we are now trying to make real practical sensor system. To make some real sensor system, we can learn from uh, our teacher. She is my dog, now four years old. She's a high performance gas sensor system, <laughs> kind of. Really, really great. Yeah, even in the raining, she can find that whatever on the road. It's, it's really amazing. Anyway, so we need, of course, nose. But not only nose, but also we need some lung for gas manipulations. And also we have to uh, interpret the signal coming from nose. And of course, body for integration. So we can project these components onto this uh, grand scheme of this type of sensor. And for the nose, we can use MSS, but still we need some optimization for mass productions. And of course we need some receptors, designing, uh, coatings, and so on. And we need to have standard gas for calibration and precise measurements. And also the signals are very uh, complicated. So we have to make some, some type of analytical models and also the signals are very huge, so we have to make some big data analysis to make some uh, meaning from the large numbers of signals. 
and system integration and statistics. We have to cover all these aspects to make real application. So it is basically impossible to cover all these aspects by ourselves. So we made a team together with companies, universities, and to integrate the cutting edge technologies into one platform. Okay, this is the so-called MSS Alliance. Uh, each partner uh, contributes to each uh, component, like uh, hardware, Kyocera hardware, and NEC for software uh, issues, and Sumitomo Seika's gas company for providing standard gas precise measurements. And Nanoworld, you, some of you may know this. This is a supplier of uh, cantilevers. Uh, so uh, my collaborator, Dr. Akiyama, is now in this uh, company. So we are optimizing the structure. And also uh, analytical model from the professor Washio from Osaka University. And we are working together to establish some basic technology required for mobile olfaction sensor system. So we last last year, oh just oh just yes, just just one hour one year before. September twenty ninth today is yeah yeah just one yeah I should have celebrate <laughs> anyway anyway so annual Okay, anyway, so it's, uh, we made a press conference here. So uh, we are now really working together to develop technologies. So we are uh, responsible for developing receptor materials. So we are National Institute for Material Science. So we have lots of different materials. So we are trying to make various materials for this sensor. But we can do some random uh, uh, application, but it is good to have some analytical model for have some uh, guideline to develop materials. So we made some uh, uh, to developed some analytical model. So in this uh, field, this Tony equation is a standard equation for describing this type of sensor. It is reported in more than 100 years ago. And it relates surface stress to deflection, mechanical deflection. So this is very useful equation but it contains only parameters for a sensor body, this part, and no uh, information on this part. So we went, uh, I went to the library and found this legendary paper from Timo, Timoshenko. This is just a bimetal, bimetal theory. And quickly make some uh, just formulate by including some uh, boundary condition and so on, and make some kind of analytical model. So this model contains uh, all the physical parameters of receptor layers in addition to the sensor body. So we can now understand how, for example, thickness or Young's modulus affect on the signal. Okay, so this is a comparison with finite element analysis. Uh, so with the Stoney's equations, it gives something like this because it does not contain the thickness of coating films. So it's a huge uh, difference between the uh, simulated 
results. But with this analytical model, we can uh, clearly uh, calculate the optimum condition for uh, best sensitivity. OK, so we confirmed experimentally the trend of this uh, sensitivity versus uh, film sickness and so on. OK, so we are now trying to use uh, various materials. And uh, typical materials is uh, polymers. And polymers is good. Lots of variety, and it is very cheap. So, uh, but some companies are worrying about its durability as a sensor sensing element. So, uh, Dr. Shiba, my colleague, uh, are expert of synthesize some materials, and we found some inorganic material. So actually, the nanoparticles can be a good uh, receptor material with high durability and sensitivity and so on. And actually, uh, we found uh, he can modify this material by changing some functional groups and with uh, four different uh, receptor materials, we can cover white a variety of gases, like, uh, so these are the measured gases, and this is uh, uh, sensitivity to, uh, with each material. And uh, it can cover lots of uh, gases, but of course, we can somehow try to make some specific material which reacts to only to a specific gas, like a narrower selectivity. And he also found some material can be very specific to this gas. V, sorry, I, I could not uh, show in detail, but it is not so easy to make this kind of material, but we can try. Anyway, so uh, we have to also coat this kind of material. And uh, we are now trying to use various uh, technologies, like this is inkjet spotting. It is good, but sometimes it is uh, having some clogging problems and splashing. So it is not so easy to optimize the uh, conditions, but this would be uh, one of the reasonable options. And also, we can use spray coatings. Uh, sorry, it's very 90 degree. But anyway, this is sample uh, sensor chip, and we can just coat. And y using some mask, we can uh, coat different materials. And also, we can use uh, some hand-operated deep coating and so on. OK, anyway, uh, these are the, our uh, activities as a, a member of Alliance responsible for uh, materials. And uh, we have, so, as for the demonstration purpose, uh, we made some gadget like this. So this is the uh, same thing here. Um, so it is now, it can measure just like this. So he here is a sensor chip and I can simply blow and see the reaction of the sensor chip to my breath. And interestingly, uh,
So this is the ethanol. Mm, ethanol. <laughs> 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 so maybe a bit can may somehow. So okay. This is my breath profile. But if I blow ethanol. So that red one goes down. Is that working? Yeah, so somehow. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> anyway. So it's completely different from my breath pattern. So it confirms that I'm not drunk right now. <laughs> I'm intact. Anyway, anyway, so uh, another another stuff is something like this. So th this is just for uh, demonstration, just simple demonstration. But this is actual measurement system. So it includes everything. So sensor chip pumps, CPU, interface, and so on. Uh, de developed in collaboration with Kyocera. And as a benchmark test, we try to measure the standard smell kit for training sommelier. Do you know this? Oh, this one contains 54 different smells. And we found uh, this simple device just operated by USB can be can discriminate these 54 smells without over overlap. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of great results. Anyway, so this MSS chip is now available from one of our partner, Nano World. Uh, so you can ask him. So the, again, Dr. Akiyama. Uh, we des uh, designed this sensor chip with a bit larger footprint. So this is diameter of one millimeter. So it is somehow feasible to coat just with your pipette. So you can simply drop your favorite materials and just measure uh, electric signal from Wheaton Bridge output. Then you can easily do whatever gas sensing measurements. Anyway, so we are now trying to make this kind of contributions that distribute some mobile devices and uh, network with uh, cloud computing. It's it just, just a uh, concept of IoT stuff. Okay, then finally, just, just uh, I like to show a very different approach. This is uh, Recently, we published that aero thermodynamic mass analysis. This is a bit different story. Just to, okay. Um, uh, we found that a simple cantilever without any receptors, just simple strip. And if you flow some gas towards cantilever, the deflection of this lever is proportional to molecular weight. It is somehow uh, kind of uh, intuitive, but uh, there was no report like on this uh, phenomenon. And uh, we 
managed to uh, make some uh, comprehensive analytical model for this uh, mechanics, including aerodynamics, thermodynamics, and mechanics, and found uh, some this kind of uh, feature. So the deflection is can be described like this. So k is kind of constant, and so arc tangent part can saturate easily to some uh, constant value. So it's kind of proportional to this molecular weight. May weight. Anyway, so th this can be uh, demonstrated by simple business card. So uh, handheld business card, uh, we can observe the difference between nitrogen, argons, and so on. And it follows the analytical model. Yeah. OK. So this is the, just the ending of my talk that I like to thank uh, fundings from various uh, organizations. I really appreciate it. Without this support, we cannot do anything. And uh, thank for my group members, uh, especially Dr. Shiba and Dr. Imamura. They are great guys working hard. And of course, many, many collaborators in academia and industries. And uh, especially, these uh, studies are very much supported by internship students from University of Waterloo through the COPE program. So, uh, including my run there, and uh, lots of uh, COPE great students. And uh, we made some demonstration in front of ministers and wrote some papers together and made some electronics, prototype devices, some experiments, softwares, and got some award, and so on. So we enjoy a lot. And of course, not only experimental research aspect, but we made some lots of tours having lots of ramen, whatever, sushi, and so on. Anyway, yeah, so I really appreciate this COPE program that really helps our activities. And uh, without their support, uh, we cannot come to this point. Yeah, so I hope uh, we can continue this uh, relationship and enhance the relationship. Anyway, uh, so uh, as written in this, uh, as introduced, I'm also an associate professor in the University of Tsukuba. And uh, you can quickly go to this page and you can find some. So uh, I can accept master students, PhD candidates, and you can get the degree from University of uh, Tsukuba, working in NIMS and receiving some stipend uh, for master students. It's like this, and doctor students like this. It's you, you can drop two zero to get US dollars, so yeah, no, not, not so great, but not so bad, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so please try to, uh, yeah, of course, but you, you have to uh, go through some screenings. But anyway, uh, we are very much uh, welcome to work together. OK, so uh, this is the end of 
my talk. So now we are trying to develop a new sensors and hopefully we can contribute to making a better future. So thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. And thank you for hiring our students. Yeah. Very much appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's really, really great students. Uh, questions for me? That is, uh, yeah, of course, it's kind of a source of drift or noise. But as you can see, that uh, that is a full Wheatstone bridge. And yeah, so it's not so much sensitive to the fluctuation of temperature. It's compensating each other. And But of course, if you heat up a lot, it gives some drift. But that drift is not usually from the piezo registers itself, but the bimetal effect of the receptors and silicon substrate. So the thermal expansion coefficient is different to each other. So, but yeah, we we have to of course uh, control that issue. Maybe by putting some simple temperature sensor and just. Uh, calibrate. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you for a very nice presentation. My thank question you. has two parts. One yes. One is that uh, is it only limited to low concentration in media, or can you use your you know sensor for high concentration as well? The part two is that can you uh, do you see any you know future for quantitative measurement of the concentration as well? Okay, so for the first question, uh, so it is kind of dynamic range or how say? Yeah, so we uh, can measure from very low concentration to high concentration, but linearity is uh, somehow not always the same. So uh, it depends on the materials of receptors. If, if we can have some materials, yeah, so it, it, anyway, it depends on the materials. Of course, some materials saturate quickly, but some materials can be used for a higher concentration and lower concentration, so. And for the second question, that quantitative measurements. <clears throat> so that is uh, one challenge, but we got some uh, good results. But simple approach can be uh, just calibrate before you measure actual sample with some known concentration samples and see how each sensor reacts to 10%, 20%, 30%. And if you get some lines beforehand, you, you can guess with unknown sample. But yeah, it is kind of tricky to get some quantitative number from the mixture of gases. Like if I have to measure the concentration of whatever, ethanol, at this point, it's really difficult. Yeah, but we are now trying to make some uh, approach. Mm -hmm. um, and then kind of along those lines, um, for your cancer study, for mm -hmm. example, um, do you take into account other factors like, say, 
Yes, that is a big issue for the breath analysis. And uh, for that cancer patients, it's just simply blow into the bag and bring to the lab and measure with uh, nitrogen carriers. But uh, it, uh, yeah, as, as you pointed out, it's very much affected by some various factors like what you eat in lunch or you slept well last night or, yeah, even f the first few seconds of one breath, the component is different from the last few seconds of the breath. So uh, the sampling of breath is very, very uh, important issue to make some reasonable analysis from the breath. So yeah, there are lots of studies, but still very, very confused or complicated. So we have to make some standard or, but you know, breath analysis should be easy. Otherwise, you, you can simply take out some blood. So it, it's kind of trade-off or, yeah, of course, if we can measure something unique only from breath, it is great. We can control, do not eat, do not sleep or whatever, but yeah. So it, 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 we have to design the whole standard to make some reasonable. Okay. I was wondering how you control like the residue from prior tests. Do you use like a new chip every time you take a test? Yeah. If that you do, how do you, uh, how reproducible are the chips? Like, do they get similar to Yes, that is very good point. So uh, as you saw in the real time movie uh, here, so it, it basically, uh, so this is, I blow and stop. So it, it basically evaporates okay. some, somehow. Uh, it's kind of equilibrium uh, phenomenon. But of course, uh, some sticky gas remains for a long time. So that caused some drift and causing, so, and also that remaining molecules in the receptor layer cause some strange effect when the something new comes. So it, there is some in interaction between this remaining gas and new coming gas. So resetting the sensor element is very important. And now we are trying to find reasonable and easy way to reset the sensor to some specific baseline. But uh, just for uh, discrimination or identification measurements, we can just simply let it evaporate. And it comes back to somehow reasonable baseline. Yeah, so it, it depends on the, uh, how say, performance you want, and uh, yeah, so. Any more questions? Can you uh, compare the capabilities of your MSS device with your Nana device? Uh, you mean na na Your dog? <laughs> ah, Nana! <laughs> Nano device, nano device. Yeah, so, uh, okay. She is great, very sensitive to some specific gas. Uh -huh. More sensitive? M much more sensitive than our sensor. Okay. For some specific, her favorite gas. <laughs> but, you know, uh, this sensor can be much more sensitive than some guess which she is not interested in. Right. Yeah, so, so uh, not difficult to com compare. Mm -hmm. But of course, she's great, but this is not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
yeah, uh, whichever. Okay. We can simply purchase from Sigma Artrich or uh, simple polymers like uh, PMMA or PVP, PEI, whatever such common. Or, of course, you can synthesize your favorite polymers. So it, there's no uh, limitation. Yeah, of course, as long as it reacts mechanically. Yeah. I see. Yeah, of course, uh, we have to have some contact with gas. So if gas spontaneously come to this sensor, we don't need to have some pumps. We can simply leave it somewhere and wait for gas to come. But uh, uh, yeah, so. As long as gas comes onto the sensor, it reacts. Yeah. But in that case, uh, we can extract a bit less information. Uh, to get a larger information, it would be better to have some pumps to get some specific profiles not only the peak height, but just uh, absorption, desorption curves, which contains lots of uh, information of interaction between receptors and gases and so on. So yeah, it depends on the, the application. Okay, let's thank our speaker again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.